What's going on, folks? I am Goat, and welcome back to Warframe. Let's talk about the Angels of Zeremon. Okay, first and foremost, you know, the funny nickname rolls around about the Angels of Zeremon as being, or as far as Warframe getting the not-so-lovingly nickname of Bugframe. And typically, it, become, it comes for two different reasons under normal circumstances. One, because any online content game typically... You know, they beta test some, you know, and then they release their content. And of course, you know, potential, you know, code bugs or all sorts of crazy shit could possibly come up. OK, and, and that's understandable, especially in a free to play game. I really don't have a whole lot of room to bitch about that. Um, and, you know, I've I've become quite accustomed to seeing multiple, you know, hot fixes and things like that. But right now we're up to hot fix number eight on Angels of Zeremon in a two week time frame and shit still ain't fixed. <laughs> And then Warframe releases 14 hours ago um, information in regards to an update that honestly I find to be exceptionally annoying, okay? I want to show you something though, okay? Like, I, I did something between two days ago and earlier today. I went through and I tested a theory, okay? So we know this marker for anybody who has uh, beaten the steel path or gotten to the steel path that you can change yourself over to the steel path by looking at everything on the map. Correct? Correct. We see this, right? They're all flashing. I've completed them all. Right? That's annoying. I've literally beaten all of them. I went to rotation C on all of them just because I did all missions twice. Technically, I've done the mobile defense and the exterminate three times, uh, but I've done them all twice just to be sure. Problem number one, find that highly annoying. Uh, problem number two is um, the fact that basically half the shit on the Zeremon is still bugged. Um, Thrax still appear in walls and... Um, and unless you hold your tongue right, lift your right foot and do the fucking hokey pokey, uh, sometimes you fail missions. Um, the elevator going into missions is still buggy as fuck. Um, sometimes there are random mission failed still popping up for absolutely no fucking reason. Um, these are all things that were supposed to be fixed. Plus there was, you know, things along, like I can show you every single hotfix that they've done with Angels of Xeraman, which is update 31.5. Okay. And it's it's really fucking annoying. Honestly, it's really annoying to the point that like it kind of makes you want to, you know, get really fucking frustrated. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the update history. OK, that's that's first and foremost what we are going to do. We're going to look at the update history. Now, this is directly from Warframe's page. OK, nothing to be hidden here. This is all information of what's going on. So you can see the original release. OK, which was. You know, <laughs> I mean, let's see here, 427. So, I mean, that was what? Um, that's the wrong direction on months. So, yeah, it was two fucking weeks ago, right? Yeah, two weeks ago to the day, because I'm recording this at 11.46 p.m. on, on the 11th of March, or uh, the 11th of May. Um, so, yeah, that's issue number one, right? 427 to this point. Two weeks, technically 15 fucking days since this shit released. And they've already done eight goddamn hot fixes. Okay. Like we're seeing, you know, release one, two, all the way to eight. Right. And like if you click each one, it tells you exactly what the fuck they did on each hot fix. Now, before I go too crazy about this and, and sound like I'm all of a sudden a Warframe hater, which I am not, frustrated, yes, hater, no. Um, Let's point out the obvious. This is a lot of shit that they dropped in this update, and they've done this tw like twice now. They've done two back to back fat ass updates, okay? Like legitimately gigantic fucking updates. If you look, okay, the Echoes of War dropped. I mean, you know, that's update 31, 31.1. Then the new Nora's mix hit, right? 
had one minor patch, everything was good. Then Garuda Prime dropped, and then the Angels of Zeremon have dropped. And this period of time has basically been a month. Okay, in a month's fucking time, this was a metric fuck ton of stuff. Stuff that dropped. Okay. I mean a metric fuck ton of stuff. Like this is beyond a Tenocon's level of shit that they've dropped. Like I was talking about this being feeling like Tenocon of last year, right? They just dropped a fuck ton of stuff. They did this as a non-Tenocon update of four fucking updates. It was crazy. I mean, absolutely fucking crazy. They completely reworked the focus school, completely reworked operators, um, you know, and their their function instead of just having, you know, school-based functions. Now they have health and shields and, and they actually have two abilities. Um, you know, I mean, they've reworked a lot, okay? So I expected, truthfully, roughly 10 updates in the first month as far as, you know, pat, you know, um, Hot fixes. I, I, in a month's time, I expected roughly 10 hot fixes. With the amount of crap that's been dropping, I truthfully did. I expected quite a few, especially dropping an entirely new, you know, um, syndicate coupled with all the extra crap that comes with said syndicate. You know, so, I mean, you've got multiple NPCs, you've got multiple functions, an entirely new farm system, new enemies, the entire Eximus rework, the focus school rework, the operator rework. That's a lot of stuff, okay? But this particular update, I gotta tell you, like I, I, I've i seen past videos of some content released that people were very upset about, like the Imperium, right? The rail, you know, the, the whole, you know, Railjack uh, setup and it's first being just basically unfucking playable all the way through Railjack, what, 3.0? Up until Railjack 3.0 released, I mean, truthfully, Railjack was mostly unplayable unless you were running just a super tank fucking arc wing and praying like hell that you could take out the skirmish missions that way because your fucking, I mean, your your Railjack was just like, you know, a floating tin can that was just going to get holes blown in it left and right. You could not sustain it on the old avionics system without farming the shit out of the highest level stuff, which would get your ship blown up trying to do it. So you would literally have to arc wing everything, like put your Railjack 35, 40,000 meters off the map and then fast travel in your arc wing all the way into the fucking mission. I mean, it's shit like this, right? You know, that that style of a big-ass, you know, update hitting to try to change gameplay. And that's where they start running into problems. Like, has the focus tree been in dire need of a rework? Absolutely, fucking lutely it has. Do I think that their idea of just reconstituting you know, all of your points back to you, taking the pool out of the equation and changing the function of abilities was enough? No, I don't. I still think focus lenses are an absolute fucking joke. I think that you should just be able to, just like a syndicate sigil, you know, you have a syndicate sigil on your front and then you have your focus school on your back. There's how you gain focus, sigils. I think that's the easiest and most, you know, user-friendly function instead of installing lenses getting blueprints running you know different mission types to get better lenses but then if you want to change because you main with like three frames if you want to change your focus tree you know and you have it like as a newer player especially if you want to unlock the school you have to equip a lens well what if all of a sudden you start maining with that frame but then you need to go unlock another fucking school well, the moment you take that lens off, you sacrifice said lens. It's gone. Good night. So if you've built it all the way up to an Eidolon lens or a Lua lens, get the fuck out of here. I mean, that's painful to fucking do. So it's really annoying. The entire lens system is really stupid. I've said that for the longest fucking time. Not, maybe not on camera, but I've said it repeatedly so many times to my clanmates that the entire focus system in regards to the lenses is absolutely dumb. You know, you could do it just as simply. You know, you gain a certain amount of, you know, shit unlocked in your school. And just like with syndicates, you get a higher percentage, you know, a higher percentage of gain as you run missing or missions, just like the lenses. You get so much excess affinity with a base lens. You know, you get more with a greater lens, more with an Eidolon lens, more with a Lua lens and so on. So each sigil could do the same function, except that you could move it from one frame to another. Damn, putting it on weapons and anything else, you just get base function. Here you go. Here's how you gain rep. Just like gaining rep with a syndicate, you gain focus by using a sigil instead of a lens. 
and it's something that you can move from one frame to another frame to another frame. Like, how this has literally just gone right over fucking DE's head is beyond me, considering they were completely willing to 100% rework the shit out of the focus school. But this one stupid little thing, I mean, right over their fucking head. Don't understand that, but whatever. It is what it is. We're still stuck with focus lenses. So we're still stuck wasting our time in regards to, you know, farming that bullshit to get it as good as you can. And until you cap out that school, you basically are just stuck with that shit on your frame because if you try to take that motherfucker off, put a different one on, game over. There's some people that just solely love running one frame. You know, like I run, I mean, for fuck's sake, you know, I run, oh, let's see here. Like my top five frames are my top five frames that I run regularly, okay? Neja Prime, Lavos, Protea, uh, Wukong, and Wisp, okay? My top 26 has obviously been rearranged and rearranged for all sorts of different purposing functions, especially since the Eximus rework, because I need shit that's actually going to survive because the shit they say is supposed to work doesn't fucking work, or they fuck, okay? First and foremost, the Eximus rework, okay? So we're, we're looking at all this crap, right? So like the update information says, Angels of Zaraman Quest, new tile set being the Zaraman, new hub, Chrysalith, new syndicate, Zaraman bounties, new mission types, incarnate weapons, new arcanes, Dormazone, Void Shell skins, which three fucking Warframes, your operator and your drifter, come to fuck on. I mean, you know, if you're really gonna say you're dropping Void Shell skins, don't just give us a couple and have a nice day. New Warframe Gyre, meh. You know, new melee stance, pretty cool. New melee, pretty cool. New rifle, actually pretty cool. Um, supporter packs, it's, you know, for the ones that want to buy rather than grind, which is whatever. I have no judgment on that whatsoever. Um, you know, the, the Valkyr Carnivex collections, whatever. Focus school system rework. Eximus Reborn. Sorry, my mic stand is in my way here. Um, new player experience, quality of life changes. I I can tell you right now, I'm between Reddit and Facebook, I have seen so many people complain that are lower level that are still going through the story quests that have hit the sacrifice and are having an absolute fucking nightmare scenario going on because you can't Void Blast Umbra because Void Blast doesn't fucking exist anymore. How's that a thing, right? Um... Clan recruitment changes, maggot decorations, like, you know, audio reverb changes, and many addition, uh, addition changes, option, opti blah, 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 optimizations, and fixes. Uh-huh. So that's just the prereqs. So, hotfix number one. Uh-huh. Like, I honestly, I'm not even going to go through all these hotfixes because it's just head-breaking shit at this point, okay? Like, it's legit head-breaking shit. There's so much crap that they've had to go back and just fight to fix. And as of yet, not so much. Now, I know, granted, the hotfix here, number eight, is Zephyr, uh, Zephyr Prime and Chroma Prime Vault releasing, but there's also bugs they were fixing in that. So it is what it is. But then, 14 hours ago, uh, Rebecca, or Megan, I'm sorry, Megan posted this. And I mean to tell you, this is kind of fucking annoying. I'm I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna read this bitch. I know y'all can see this shit, but I'm gonna read this. This is Hello Tenno. It's been almost two weeks uh, two weeks since the launch of Angels of Zaraman on all platforms. The team has deployed six plus hotfixes. Um, why not just put eight? Why not just put eight? And digested handfuls of feedback. Um, go to the forums. You're gonna see more than handfuls. It's like a fucking biography. It's like the size of War and Peace trying to read that shit just on the Angels of Zaraman. Um, and have digested handfuls of feedback threads. But what's next? While the individual hot fixes were needed to address crucial bugs, that's no bullshit. Mission failure as soon as you step off the elevator. Um, no enemies around whatsoever to complete things. Um, you know, can't spawn the angels, dying for absolutely no fucking reason, all sorts of horseshit. Um, void slinging into walls and falling off the map, that was a fun one. Um, yeah, there's a, a few things. 
So while these individual hotfixes were needed to address crucial bugs, we have larger plans committed to addressing bigger feedback areas to our next major update, Angels of Xeramon 1.1, final name pending. God, I fucking hope so, because if you just name it Angels of Xeramon 1.1, that's going to look really fucking stupid. Uh, we would also like to apologize for the frustrations of these uh, bugs caused... Uh, th the frustrations? Many of these bugs caused for our community. Much has been taken into account for future releases. I fucking bet that I've actually seen people say that they've quit this fucking game and uninstalled it because of all these bugs. Because this has literally been one of the worst releases they've had so far. <clears throat> so that we can avoid the bumps that we saw during initial launch. Uh, we will be entering console certification for 1.1, meaning that all the issues or changes from the Angels of Xeramon launch that require code integration will go live with this update. This includes bugs, uh, fixes for bugs such as Void Plume 08 pickup count indicator, which is needed. That's nice. Instead of having to continually fucking, you know, not even view mission progress because that shit's all the way down at the bottom of the list. So unless you've picked up nothing else, you can't, you like, you literally have to go into your pause menu and then actually view mission progress rather than just hitting tab on your goddamn controller or on your keyboard. Oh, so yeah, yeah, seeing something as simple as that, I don't know why that wasn't ever implemented, but whatever. Uh, Xeramon Steel Path Completion Inbox still uh, not being sent and more. Yeah, as I just showed you, I've completed all five fucking mission missions, and the Dorma Zone itself still shows that it's a steel path node for some stupid fucking reason, which was supposedly fixed, but is not. Um, I mean, hell, my game just updated again because of today's hotfix, and it's still showing that. And I have legitimately completed those missions, but they show as I haven't. Even under my statistics, they show that I haven't. I did them. Trust me. Um... Our objective for Angels of Xeramon 1.1 is to address top feedback points that required more development time, careful consideration, and code changes to implement. Now, one would think that you would not fucking release content. Again, I'm not trying to be, you know, the fucking hater of content, uh, contentual, you know, releasing. But if your shit is fucked up, don't put it out to your community. I mean, for fuck's sake, you made people wait three goddamn years for the new war. You think you can't make us wait a couple of more months to make sure you fix the Angels of Xeramon before you actually drop this shit? Like, yeah, everybody wanted to see where everything was going from the new war. Sure, I'll give you that. Without question, I will give you that. The whole Narmer situation, everybody's curious about that one. Very paradox. Everybody's very curious about that one, especially by what we see inside of the Xeramon. There's a lot of Duveri-esque type stuff. Um, there's a lot of shit going on with the Angels of Xeramon as far as the story of it that makes you question, okay, are these people even from the same Xeramon or is the eternalism argument real with this shit? What bugs me is that top feedback points, who are they saying are the top feedback people? Because by the list of people I've seen complaining about the focus school rework, the Eximus school rework, um... I said uh, the 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 uh, sorry focus school rework Eximus rework um, crowd control just basically being dead to all Eximus is absolutely it's way worse than it sounded like squish frames are just dying unless you are just weaponed out like a motherfucker um, yeah squish frame builds are uh, you know, squish frame CC builds are just in dire need right now like I get making the game more fun I really do and making it more of a tanky situation is okay but the way that they put this shit to us here's the thing that bugs me okay the way that they put this to us is that void energy would take would have a actionable function against the overguard shield therefore making the eximus harder to deal with so therefore you have to do the operator and then your warframe not just go at the eximus like we always have with big aoe weapons and just blow them clean the fuck off the map and you know bob's your uncle have a nice fucking day guess what you still have to do fire one or two extra bullets like with the Brahma, normally you could take out a level 105 to 125 fucking, you know, enemy on the steel path with like one or two shots. Worst case, if your aim sucked asshole, now it's like three or four. If you still have shitty aim, it's like two with good aim. Nothing's changed, except for the fact that Void Energy seemingly does absolutely goddamn nothing against the Overguard that they said this was the way this was going to work. Okay. 
So in regards to void sling, we're experimenting with directional changes such as strafing, sideways mobility, and backwards sling to allow more movement options. Strafe and back slings were tested during void sling development, but at that time, uh, but at the time we felt that uh, having similar directional control to bullet jump was important. Community feedback tells us that more mobility options are better and we are working on changes that meet that desire. Additionally, we're reviewing the code to resolve some of the transference latency issues uh, and considering other tweaks to operators. Well, that's a good fucking thing because there has been a latency problem. You go to pop in your operator and there's a shit ton of void static. There's like a fat ass fucking delay. It doesn't seem like much when you see, like, you know, on some of the videos that you're going to see coming up. It really doesn't seem like a lot. But considering before it was just kapow, you're in your fucking operator, kapow, you're back in your fucking warframe. Very, very minor amount of time. And now it's like you hit it. You actually like hit the buttons and then something fucking happens. So, yeah, there is a bit of a fucking transference void static issue going on here that's causing a latency issue. But here's what bugs me. They're talking about the void sling now having strafing and backwards. Why did we change it to void sling then? Aside from actually having distance control, okay, why did we change it to void sling to begin with? Because you could do all that shit before. You could go sideways. You could go backwards. You could do all this crazy shit with void dash. The only thing that changed with void sling was the fact that now you can't go backwards, you can't go fucking sideways, and you do have distance control. Instead of just being a blank amount of here, poof, you're over here. Okay, well now you actually can control your distance. So why not just have a, you know, like we had before with void dash, but with distance control? That, I, I would, like, why did we change this? I love the fact that operators have abilities. I love the fact that operators have shields. I love the fact that operators have more health. It makes them more survivable, especially against these new stupid Eximus. Oh, so yeah. So another issue, highly discuss, another highly discussed topic being reviewed is Overguard. We're currently experimenting and reviewing different options to address the varying islands of feedback. Yeah, that would be um, a way to put it, like continental level islands. <laughs> Um, we understand that uh, that doesn't provide you with much to go off of, but please know that we're committed on making good on the feedback that we've been given. In past case of digital extremes, that is not something that you can believe in. This is more like the words of a politician at this point. Digital extremes is a very bad habit of not listening to their game players, especially more established players that really know the game function. Now, again, I'm just, you know, I'm like two years, two months into this game, okay? I'm also at Legendary 2. I've also put in just shy of 2,000 hours in this fucking game. So I do know the game. I Am I the best? Absolutely fucking lootly not. And I'm not even close to claiming to that. And I probably never will. There's always somebody better. I'm just goofy, right? That's just the way I play. I play goofy as fuck. I giggle and I have a good time because it's a game. But from what I've seen in the past, they they are not very good at listening to their... their um, their followers, their game players, you know, the, their established gameplay. And the problem is, is that by making this so goofy, this makes the new player aspect that much worse. Because honestly, I don't want this game to die. I enjoy playing this game. Hence why I'm shooting this fucking video. I thoroughly enjoy playing this game. Without question, I love this game. But by making shit so ridiculously stupid and giving ass backwards information, before you even release the content, then when it releases, you literally go back to, you know, more in-game weaponry style. Operators are really non, a non-factor against the fucking, you know, the Overguard Eximus. We're just literally doing the same thing. You just have to knock down an extra bit of shielding or armor to actually kill the fuckers. I love the way the Eximus function with their abilities now. I will say that. I really do. But the Overguard thing is the thing that's dumb. It doesn't work as planned. Um, additionally, we're giving reviewing possibilities for new operator arcanes. This is the part that pisses me the fuck off right here, okay? It's like, this literally makes me kind of angry. I won't point out why, okay? Because, like, I love grinding in this game. There's lots of shit to grind in this game. It takes you a hot fucking minute to do it. We're reviewing the possibility for a new operator... Or, 
for new operator arcanes that have different interactions with Overguard and are planning on adding additional arcane slots for amps. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now. Would I love to have an additional arcane for my operator? Sure. The slot. You give me an additional slot, fuck the Eximus rework. I can make my operator, like I can literally, I can literally run like Magus Repair, Magus, um, Magus Replenish, and Magus Lockdown at the same fucking time. So I can heal my Warframe, lock down fucking enemies aside from the Eximus with their Overguard up, and, and I can replenish my fucking health on for my operator this is double dipping on health replenishment okay and i can lock down enemies to keep things from getting too bad shit crazy but that's three slots that's great i don't need extra shit to try to fix overguard okay but if they do come up with arcane specifically directed towards fighting overguard that means that now we have to we're more than likely going to have to grind out what 21 new uh, you know arcanes to make one fully ranked arcane to fight this overguard so y'all done goofed right y'all y'all fucked up and we're eight hot fixes into this fucking into this quest release and this content release so you guys done fucked up and now you've done caught the fact that the community's pissed off that you've fucked up and so your idea to fix said problem your idea to fix said problem straight to our faces is here we're gonna give you more shit to grind so you're okay to fight what that's the dumbest fucking thing that's like somebody hitting your car and then asking for money to you for you to fix their car, even though they did it. Y'all done fucked up, y'all fix it. Okay, like I'm not usually the kind of person to sit here and ask for free shit, but y'all done fucked this up so goddamn bad that now, hey, we're gonna open up a new slot. Sounds exciting, right? We're gonna open up a new slot for the operator or we're, we're looking into opening up a new slot for the operator and, you know, to fight against this overguard problem that we said was gonna work that doesn't in any fucking way, really. And by the way, we're also thinking about opening up an extra slot for your amp. Cool, new arcanes. A rank five arcane, okay, not a rank three, Okay, rank five. Rank five arcane is 21 arcanes. Their standing cap with any syndicate is typically, and that's if you can get them through a syndicate, and you know, like most of your operator shit usually comes through uh, Quilonku or through Little Duck. Great. But your higher level stuff that's really actionable and functional against higher level stuff is 10,000 rep or 10,000 standings for one arcane. So that's 210,000 standings. So with Fortuna, that means you need to go farm either a shit ton of, of the, uh, the Isoplast, okay, or go farm a fucking metric fuck ton of toroids, right? If it goes through Anku, that means you need an absolute metric fuck ton of sentient cores whatever the case may be sentient you know the uh, intact the flawless whatever you need a shit ton of sentient cores to rank up with anku which means eidolon hunts a lot of people don't like doing eidolons a lot of people don't like farming toroids so you're literally making a fat ass grind for a shit ton of your community because you done goofed Truth of the matter is, is you, you DE goofed so fucking bad with this thus far, and they just keep sticking band-aids on it, which are only fixing some of what they're saying they're fixing, but then they're turning around and saying, by the way, you should kiss our butts because we're going to give you the opportunity to get this stuff. No, 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 no. See, y'all done fucked up so goddamn bad, and I've been playing through this glitchy ass shit for two fucking weeks now. Give me the fucking arcanes, okay? Give everybody that has done the Angels of Zeraman quest. Anybody who's actually done the quest to this point, okay? You can't tell me that they don't have access to completion of account, right? Yes, that takes work. Guess what? You fucked up. Do some work. You got people paying for shit all the fucking time. This is a billion dollar fucking industry, okay? Don't even fucking tell me that this game does not make money. I have seen, you know, Mastery 4 guys with Garuda Prime ranking it, okay? Don't tell me that motherfuckers don't make money in this game. If you are, you blind and lying. Go through the account histories of anybody who's completed Angels of Zeraman up to the point of when they do this update and just give them the arcanes to fix your stupid. 
because that's what this is. This is a stupid mistake. And now you're going to punish us by making us farm at least a rank three mod for an, an, a potential rank three mod. So we're talking nine arcanes there at usually somewhere between 2000 to 5000 or 2000 to 10,000 standing per arcane there. Okay. And then 21 arcanes for the operator. So we're talking 30 arcanes. And that's if there's only two new arcane releases. What if there's like five? This is ridiculous. Okay. Am I going to keep playing the game? Absolutely. I am. I, like I said, I love this fucking game, but this is so stupid. This is this is dumb beyond fucking compare at this point. Like I'm I'm questioning who got drunk and said we're good to go to release this. Like literally, who picked up the fucking bottle of Jack? Thought it was aged well and it's actually gone bad. Drank this shit that's so goddamn fermented that it just poisoned their liver and their brain and said, "Okay, we're good to release. Let's do this." Oh, hey, welcome to Bug Frame, hot fix number eight, and we're still not fixing the shit. But hey, we're just going to release an entirely new update. We give you our word that it's fixed, but hey, there's more farm to do, even though we're the ones that fucked it up. This is annoying as balls. Like, this is just, this is so stupid. Because the truth of the matter comes down to, <laughs> go back go back a few videos, okay? Every time you guys see me go into, a, into my loadout screen, see how much change I've made. Literally, see how much change I've made to my top 26 loadouts as far as where they're going to get used from now on and look at what they do specifically look at what they do look at what their survivability function is look at how they can affect enemies including eximus look at all the different shit that you can do there's a couple of frames in here that a couple of people will go eh, that's probably not a good idea but you know what it actually is because although crowd control abilities do not stop the eximus they can still potentially take damage from said crowd control abilities so breach surge won't blind them, but it will still irradiate their fucking heads. So yeah, this is just a fat ass annoyance in my opinion. I think that if they're gonna do this update, they really truthfully need to remove lenses and put percentage based sigils in their place. Just my personal opinion. Um, they are talking about um, also, you know, they're planning on releasing uh, the two other incarnate weapons, which would be the daggers and the shotgun uh, that they're, that were shown in DevStream 160, as well as some other goodies, so more enticing stuff. So Angels of Zeremon is our 1.1 is our commitment to the community and addressing the feedback from the original Angels of Zeremon watch. Our DevStream will speak uh, further on these changes. Stay tuned. Well, first of all, we don't know when the next DevStream is. We don't know when this possibly is coming. So right now we're stuck with bug frame 101. Holy fucking shit. I'm simply going to say God be with you in your venture. Okay. Because this is where we're at right now. This is an annoying situation and we must all truck through it the best we can. Okay. So albeit annoyed, I'm actually about to shoot a video that we'll be posting next month. Um, with doing Zeremon stuff or whatever the fuck I feel like, but probably Zeremon stuff. So on that note, I do want to thank you very much for watching. Um, I really honestly hope you have good hunting in the game and you don't run into too many bugs until this horse shit is fixed. Let's just all just sing Kumbaya, rubber fucking earlobes, say woo saw and hope like hell this gets fixed sooner rather than later, because as of yet, these hot fixes have obviously proved that these are cheap ass best choice band-aids. So anyway, I'll catch you guys later. Y'all have a good one.